First, I would like to read the beginning of Chapter 3 in my friend Reg Presley's 2002 book, Wild Things They Don't Tell Us. It wasn't a hard winter that year, but it seemed to go on and on. And to make the time pass more quickly, I became engrossed in writing songs for our new album. I normally start this procedure by treating myself to a brand new notepad and pen. So about 10 o'clock one evening, while the family were watching TV, I slipped quietly away into my den to begin. I sat at the desk and opened the pad, I put pen to paper, and then something happened, which has never happened to me before or since. Immediately, and without thinking, I began to write and I found myself looking at the end of the pen to see what I was writing. I don't quite know how to explain the feelings that I had when I read through what I had just written, but it prompted me to phone Colin and tell him. I knew it wasn't a song, and I had never written poetry before, but it was a poem. I just told Colin that something strange had happened, and he informed me that his new video had turned up that day so we arranged to meet at 10.30am the next morning at his house. By the time I arrived, Colin had set up his video, and after a few verbal pleasantries and a handshake, we sat down to watch the video. When the video was about halfway through, I reached into my pocket and gave Colin the poem, because the words he was using in his video were in my poem. We looked at one another in absolute amazement. We could not believe that what Colin was saying in his video was there in the words of my poem. I called the poem Mother Earth, The Truth, and it goes as follows. In the summer 1990, when the heat was quite intense, I draw to your attention a chain of strange events. Things have happened to me and to some of my best friends a phenomenon is happening, and the mystery never ends. I remember reading somewhere of a circle in the corn. It appeared due west of where I live, and just before the dawn. A compelling feeling told me that I really had to go, so I left home fairly quickly and drove forty miles or so. As I reached the Vale of Pusey and the White Horse on the hill, the sight I saw beneath me gave my bones a sudden chill. There, stretched out below me, sixty metres down the field, a pictogram of many shapes. What secrets would it yield? Since then, I've seen so many, and walked in quite a few, and I've the strangest feeling that the patterns hold the clue. I've heard so many answers from folks who think they know, but the truth to this enigma unfolds very, very slow. You must draw on all conclusions, and don't laugh at anyone, because the answer is in all of us who live beneath the sun. Our mother has a problem, and a problem we have made, and she tries to tell us slowly in the corn she gently lays. Younger brothers do not listen, and the time is getting short, so mother has to frighten us but as a last resort, she'll conjure up the evil winds that will move the seven seas, and move the molten mountains, and bring countries to their knees. Then we shall see a vision, like the world has never seen. Something will come, with light and sound, to end our nightmare dream. From that day on, the world will change, in every way we know and those that come will help us all to make the whole world grow. So little men of power who never got things right and are probably laughing at this now will get the biggest fright. Your money will mean nothing and power is not the key. The answers simply balance and perfect harmony. Now I'm sure that all of those words must have been in my mind ready to come out, but it was the way that it happened and the timing of how it happened for Colin's video to have been ready that next day 
and for us both to sit there and see the use of those words may have been a wild coincidence. I wonder.